So have you ever had the experience where you're sitting on a train at a station and there's another train next to you and then the train next to you starts to move but it feels like you're moving? That's an example of relative motion. Sometimes in physics we want to change the reference frame of a problem so that we can work out how something is moving in a different reference frame. So what we're about to do in a minute is show that if we want to move from one reference frame to another, we can use the equation that the velocity of A relative to B is equal to the velocity of A minus the velocity of B. So let's have a look at how this can be derived now. So we'll be considering two reference frames. And in reference frame A, Alex is at rest. Okay, so let's draw a little diagram. Here's the floor. Here's Alex, he's standing here in reference A, very stationary. So now he sees Barbara move past with a speed VBA. Okay, so here's Barbara, I'll try and draw her looking like she's moving a bit. So she's moving this way with speed VBA, directed along the x-axis. So this here is our x-axis. So we're told that the subscript here stands for the velocity of Barbara measured by Alex. Now in Alex's reference frame, he observes a particle to have a location XPA. So let's draw a particle. Here's our particle P. Now according to Alex, this distance here is given by XPA. And we're asked, how is this related to the position of Barbara measures for P? So if Barbara is measuring where P is relative to her, she'll measure it as this distance here. So this is going to be X of P measured by Barbara and the location of Barbara measured by Alex. Okay, now where does Alex measure Barbara to be? Well, here. So this distance here is equal to x of Barbara measured by Alex. So hopefully you can see from this little diagram that this tells us that xpa is equal to xba plus xpb. So next we're asked to now imagine that point P starts to move along the x-axis. So this point is now moving. The speed of P measured by Alex in frame A is given by VPA. Okay, so this is VPA that's measured by Alex, not by Barbara. And we're asked, what is the speed of P as measured by Barbara in frame B? Which is, we're trying to find VPB. Well, whenever we want to find speeds, we've got that the speed is equal to dx dt. We need to differentiate the position. So we have that dxpa dt is equal to dxba dt plus dxpb dt. So just differentiating these, we get vpa is equal to vba plus vpb. So trying to get VPB, we just rearrange it and we've got VPB is equal to VPA minus VBA. So that was the equation that we were trying to show. Now we're told here that when we solve problems, we usually take the ground as the stationary reference frame. Okay, so Alex is stationary on the ground. So we could replace Alex here with the ground. So we don't always show this subscript for the ground because it just comes up so much. So often we can write this as V of P relative to B. So this is V of point P relative to Barbara is given by the velocity of P. So this is assumed to be the velocity of P in the grounds reference frame and minus the velocity of b. And these are velocities, so it's a good idea to, to mark them as velocities with a little squiggle underneath them. 
So relative velocities can happen in more than one dimension. So for example, we could have people moving in different directions over a plane instead of along a straight line. So the relative velocity equation that we've derived also holds in more than one dimension. So in this case, we can solve it either adding our vectors head to tail or by breaking our vectors into components.